down to business. Um, I trust members will recognise that we need to achieve a constructive outcome aimed at resolving the performance issues of the waste service for the benefit of our residents. It is clear that the current level of performance is not acceptable and this was recognised at the extraordinary meeting of the O and S committee last week. I urge members to focus on solutions, not simply revisit the issues that we are fully aware of. Improving the service performance Improving the service performance and agreeing a way forward are the outcomes that we need to work towards. We will hear from FCC about its proposals to bring about a, a sustained and continuous improvement in due course and members will have the opportunity to ask questions of FCC about what it intends to do. When we come to debate how the Council should respond to the FCC proposals, I recognise that members were keen to concentrate the debate in, and in view of this, to ensure that contributions are equitable, I will be invoking the five minute time limit and the other adopted rules of debate. I urge members to avoid repetition and clear, be clear and succinct. To be clear, if you're not, I will move the debate on. So thank you for that. Right, Mr. White, are there any apologies? Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. There are. Uh, this afternoon's meeting has got apologies from Councillors Birch, Kemp and Rose. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Urgent business, other than the fact that of today there is no urgent business. Exempt information, there will be a need to divide the agenda. And on that, when you're asking questions of FCC and the lead member, if we could try and stay away from the second part of the meeting until so we don't have to go into uh, the right word, sorry, into exempt um, information, give yourselves a chance to ask all the questions pertaining to actually how it's working, and we'll de debate the other side of it afterwards, okay? Thirdly, are there any declarations of interest? No, if there are none, then I will invite Councillor Baldry, the lead member, uh, for this to introduce and then invite the Deputy Executive, Chief Executive, to provide an initial presentation on the current status of the Recycling Collection Service. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, members, members of the public and officers. I'm going to be very brief at this stage. I'm hoping to have the opportunity later on in the meeting. Uh, to move a motion and a recommendation. I will save my remarks for there. So with your indulgence, Chairman, I'll hand straight, straight over to Mr Molyneux. Thank you. Mr Molyneux. Thank you, Chair. Are we on? Right, thank you, Members. Um, what I'll do is quickly run through sort of the current position and the current position regarding performance, um, talk about what we as a council are doing, um, and then give the opportunity for FCC to talk in a little bit more detail about their plan. And then, if it's okay with the chair, we'll then take um, questions from members. So, what you can see at the moment, members, is that we've got 36,500 residents currently on the new recycling service. We've got, within that, we've got 2,000 um, properties that we've reverted to a co-mingled collection. So, that is in effect, putting the uh, recycling in a dust cart and then taking it to be treated in a different way. Um, and we've still got 8,500 residents on the old recycling system of blue and clear sacks. They would have been what's known as phase four. Um, obviously, um, you'll all be aware from the overview and scrutiny meeting last week that um, the executive are meeting with FCC management every week and myself and the chief executive and that um, the last point is blatantly obvious to all of you, the council, as in members and officers, are being completely overwhelmed with complaints and issues from members of the public. So if we move on. Um, in terms of what that shows is the sort of historic data and to give some context. So the first three um, years, that was when it was a council in-house service. And you can see the first year that FCC took the service on, 
they actually did meet the target levels um, for the first time that we as a council have done so for many, many years. I think when I look back, it was something like 2011-12 was the last time we achieved those sort of figures. So the first year was quite successful. And then the 2021 figures are a six month um, snapshot up until the move to the round review in October. So they're the first six months of 2021 when of course we had COVID, we had lockdowns. So actually they were only marginally um, above below target in terms of performance. So, so those first 18 months, the contractor in terms of waste collection was performing pretty well. If we move over to the next slide, the next slide is for the last four weeks of daily data on the number of miscollections FCC are not completing every day. So this isn't customer reports, this is FCC not being able to complete the rounds. So you can see that it's on average well over a thousand a day. So of those 36, 38,000 properties, we're getting um, in effect, over a thousand where FCC are not completing. So, and you can see that whilst it did start to improve um, last week, um, certainly the last two days, and those are, those are right up until yesterday's figures, we were back above a thousand miscollections per day. I'll go into more detail on that in a moment. So the next slide. So what this shows is the rest of the service. So the grey bar is the grey bin. The, um, I suppose I should have done it as a green, a, blue, a brown column, but it's the green waste is the middle one. And then the blue and clear sack recycling is the end one. Now that is actual customer actual reports of miscollections. Now the target there, the target bar, is what the total for all three should be altogether. So in order for FCC to achieve the target across the whole of the service, including the recycling, then FCC should be ineffectively sort of low double figures. So it should be about, that's about 60 missed actual collections a week across all service. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when people have reported uh, missed collections, I mean, it can be a whole street that gets reported and also whole streets don't necessarily um, all uh, actually say anything at all. I mean, it's just an informal conversation with me or, or somebody else. So it, how does that feed into those figures? Can I ask um, Mrs. Savage to uh, answer that question? Thank you. Um, yeah, so the number of reports that we get reported across the website, etc., are always lower than the actual number of missed bins because obviously not everybody, like you've just said, um, reports them. But in the figures for the notified misses, that's when the whole streets, when a whole streets miss, they're the figures that FCC are reporting to us. So you've got to accept really that most of, most if not all of the figures you're seeing now are already included in the FCC notified miss figures. There, it won't be quite all of them because you'll still get a residual few miss that up to 80 per 100,000. I'm not sure whether that clarified it or complicated it, but. I think what John's saying is that is that that's a bit irrelevant, that. But partly because a lot of people aren't reporting it anymore, they've just given up. So, so this slide is in for context, and if we move on to the next slide, you'll see why. So the red bar chart is the customer reports for the new recycling service. So you can see in terms of where the problem lies and whether it's accurate in terms of the actual number of streets or whatever. So if you think that FCC are notifying us that they're not collecting from over a thousand properties a day, that is the equivalent per week customer reports. And you can see that in relation to the rest of the service in terms of where the main problem lies, accepting that actually, as Councillor Brazil and Councillor McKay suggest, that not everybody will report, but you still get an idea of the scale of the problem in terms of that. So that was the reason for having that slide separate because those are still to scale in terms of the other bars. If we move on, please, Daryl. The, the next slide, members, is, is that slide that was put up at Overview and Scrutiny, which talks about the different phases and FCC's performance. And you can see that 
predominantly the first three phases while still not um, within the target that we would expect because you'd always expect initial disruption for a, a period of a couple of months that they were performing okay until um, we moved on to the um, phases five six and seven and that's when things went spectacularly off the rails so in terms of where we're at then um, we're really in an appalling position. The level of performance is completely unacceptable. Mr. Rowling, you. Uh, sorry. Correctional Hotwood. Sorry, uh, Mr. Molly, I have a question. Hello. Um, I think it would be really helpful if we knew what, um, where phases five, six, and seven were, because members of the public may you, will not be aware, and I'm not so sure I am at the moment of aware of what phases are five, six, and seven. Sorry, Mrs. Savage, can you answer that roughly? Um, not really, because they're spread across the whole district. I mean, we have provided members with that information in the past, and we can provide it again. Um, thank you, Chair. I can carry on. So... As I said, the level of performance is completely unacceptable. We cannot deliver the service that we as a council should be delivering to our residents. We are overwhelmed. FCC are overwhelmed. And what that results in is we cannot give satisfactory answers or resolve the issues that are being re raised. It is, as our local newspaper reported last week, they used the phrase shambolic. And I have to agree with them. Um, we have over a thousand missed collections a day and the this is where if we move on to those second two the, the third and fourth bullet points the issue that we've got is fcc have thrown every resource that they can get at trying to fix this problem and what it means is there's no resilience whatsoever so a single vehicle breakdown which happen on a regular basis causes a massive spike in missed collections a driver going off sick, I know that yesterday a driver w was told to self-isolate, so that has a massive issue in terms of missed collections because there is nobody left to pick up that. There's no spare capacity in the system, so any issue at the minute is creating a massive knock-on effect in terms of the service delivered to our residents. If everybody's there, we're moving towards, we know we're near, but we're moving back towards better performance. But as soon as something goes wrong, then the wheels come off completely. And that's the issue that we're facing. It's about that resilience within the service. Um, the last two bullet points, which um, FCC, I'm sure, will talk about, is around the issues around the capacity of the recycling center, um, recycling station. Um, they've got 21 trucks trying to get in and out there and unload. That causes issues in terms of delays. That means that the crews don't get out there soon enough. Uh, back out on the street soon enough and then we miss more collections so if we move on so what are the council doing about it so myself and Andy have been talking to external advisors and indeed other providers of services um, and council providers of services as well as people like the LGA we've got senior management in terms of Sarah Moody and Dale Cropper and a couple of others now embedded in FCC's team working with FCC. Um, we are absolutely trying to hold FCC to account. We have daily reviews on the previous day's performance. We're trying to move and the, the whole idea of putting our team in there is to be much more proactive in terms of problem solving on the day. So at the moment we found a find out about issues the, the day after and we need to get to the point where we're fixing issues on the day. Um, and of course, we have those weekly performance meetings with the executive. Our staff have been and continue to supplement FCC resource in terms of going out on trucks, collecting cardboard, delivery, collecting blue and clear sacks. So we are trying to support FCC that way. And then going forward, we're going to have our localities team shadow the new rounds if um, council is minded to um, recommend their plan for approval. Finally, if we go on to the Office of View. Um, so what does FCC need to achieve? Well, I've been working in customer service for now some 30 odd years. And for me, the most important asset of any service organization is its people. 
And I think that's a, a failure of FCC in terms of how they have managed their people. And I strongly believe that until they address that issue, we will not move forward quickly enough. So all those middle bullets there about effective management and supervision are about addressing that issue. And we're absolutely saying that that's what FCC need to implement. The other thing is the um, use of data. And I'm pleased to say that FCC have um, acknowledged and taken on board the fact that they are now rolling out training to all their crews um, on the use of the IT system, because they have had a lot of temporary staff. I recognize that. They are now doing that, and we'll have that completed by the end of next week. And then using that data, you can then start to be proactive in terms of managing the issues and working out where the problems are. Um, the other point there is that public assurance that with the proposal that there no recycling goes to landfill or incineration. So, so the next thing is a, a very high level summary of the plan that FCC presented and that I'm sure uh, Mr. Barnfield and Mr. Ashby will talk in a little bit more detail about this. But basically the plan that FCC are proposing is to basically get back to collecting recycling from every property every week on its scheduled day. Um, 26,000 residents will remain on the curbside sort system. So of those 36,500, 26,000 will stay exactly the same collection method. And that would be those phases one, two, and three. Um, in the interim, move in effect 11,000 properties to a weekly curbside commingled service. So what that means is the residents will carry on putting their rubbish in the boxes in their recycling in the boxes, but it will be emptied into the back of a traditional bin wagon and it will then have to go to a different recycling sort facility. Um, and food waste, unfortunately, will have to go into the residual bin. There is no option for collecting that. Um, the 8,500 properties that were on blue and clear sacks will stay on blue and clear sacks. And FCC are telling us that they will have a long-term solution complete by the end of 2021. And at that point, Chairman, I would invite um, FCC if they want to go into some more detail. If that's okay with yeah, you. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Marnie. Um, uh, 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 hello, um, members and, and fellow officers and, and members of the public. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity just to... to add some further context. I think just before we go into a little bit more detail on the plan um, and just to, to re-emphasise what I said at overview and scrutiny last week, um, FCC um, apologised to the residents that, that are affected by this. We are, um, as I think was alluded to, um, throwing everything at it um, in terms of resource to be able to, to rectify um, the issues that have been experienced by some residents um, at, at this point in time. Um, and obviously further to that, on the back of um, a fairly detailed, detailed explanation last week as to why we've, we've got to this place, and I'll, I'll touch on some of that in a minute, um, we've, we've proposed a, a, an action plan, um, which is obviously subject to, to scrutiny by um, yourselves as, as, as members today. Um, in terms of a little bit of context with regards to, to what we, we did and just a little bit of a, a reminder from last week. The, the, the resource point has been um, made and acknowledged and we, we, we appreciate the support offered by um, South Hams in terms of, of, of assisting us at a, a really challenging time for, for everybody concerned, including yourselves and your residents. Um, that resource was deployed, which, as I typically We've looked at some of the numbers and performance, which we accept is a, an un unacceptable level um, for a service um, to provide it, accepting that on all collection services there will be miscollections. But one of the, the issues we've got with the amount of resource deployed, which is, is maxed out, and I think was alluded to, our ability to rectify where we don't complete, because sometimes rounds don't complete. I think that the example that was used yesterday one of the, the crews got advised to go for a COVID test, which meant the rest of the crew, which meant that the, the round had to stop. In a, in a situation where you would have that um, cover capacity, which you would always typically have, that, that could have been um, minimised in that situation. It wasn't, which is why 
the performance data was improving until the past couple of days, but that just emphasises that the way we're approaching it at the minute is not sustainable as a as a solution. It will continue to get better, but but as the knowledge improves, but um, uh, that that is in our view um, and, and as detailed in the the action plan, are not not a sustainable position. In terms of um, the transfer station and the the depot. The additional vehicles, the, the additional congestion, congestion and, and the tip time for, for a multi-compartment vehicle, um, as alluded to last week, is, is driven by um, uh, significantly higher tonnages and volumes that were originally um, planned based on, on 2018 data. So essentially, um, it's created that bottleneck um, at the transfer station. So where you have pressure, and, and the guys are, are, are really committed to uh, in large part to, well, uh, significantly committed to, to delivering this, but where you've got that bottleneck and the guys want to tip and get back out on the rounds to, to complete, that unproductive time is, is, is causing that congestion driven by the volumes, as we've said. So in order to move forward um, as a business, we are recommending that that pressure at the transfer station is relieved, essentially, that, that's built up to a point at which we know it was broadly delivering to expectations and one that would certainly be managed down um, going forward. Um, just, I think there was a question asked around the, where, where were the last three rounds um, that, that started to essentially increase the pressure on the system. I think it, it's fair to say that they were the, the smaller vehicles, so we refer to them in the paper as the seven and a half ton uh, vehicles. Um, some of those are specialist collection vehicles which we need more of, and then some of the are the stillage seven and a half ton vehicles that we've hired in um, as the additional resource to, to try and um, improve the service performance. Um, so it's it's essentially the smaller, um, I guess, more difficult to access, more more rural. And I accept Southampton is a very uh, lovely and rural um, district, but it's 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 the, it's the rounds that require those smaller vehicles. And as the, the initial round rolled out as well, there are some properties that were identified that weren't suitable for access for some of the larger curbside sort recycling vehicles. So it is, it is those, the last three rounds that have caused the, 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 the higher lines that were referred to on a graph previously are the, are the rounds that have caused the issue. Um, so as detailed in sort of headline terms is, our proposal is to move the curbside sort service back to essentially the point at which it was accepted that it was broadly delivering um, at a level that could be managed down. And I think it's just worth reiterating, with any service change, there will always, no matter what service collection system you're switching from and to, there will always be um, uh, an initial um, bedding in uh, until the, the rounds become... Um, more settled and more consistent on a on a regular basis, and I think the other thing to, to note is where you have um, that kind of uh, manageable level, and you have additional resource. And I'll come on to the, some of the benefits of the plan. Where there are issues, you also have the ability to rectify. So, using the example again yesterday, where one of the guys was asked to go for a COVID test, which meant the crews also had to go. The rest of the crew also had to go for a test. In a situation where you had more cover resource. We could redeploy, and we can we can recover the situation much quicker, which is something that we haven't been able to do in in recent weeks. So, in essence, what what this is is, is saying is we're going to go back to that point at which those first three phases um, were delivering. the The properties that are um, to be moved to um, on a weekly basis, the the commingle collection, and, and just to provide assurance that that material would be going to, the dry material would be going to a recycling output. It would not be going to landfill or energy from waste. That just to, to, to provide assurance to, to the authority and, and your residents that that would be the case. The ability, what that enables us to do is the, the putting in a, a commingled vehicle, the productivity or the number of properties, because it's a much simpler collection system than the, the Devon Line service, in terms of the ability to move through and, and collect from more properties. It enables us to, to clear down in a, a much more, from a collections perspective, efficient manner. 
free up additional resource to supplement um, the the rectifications of I think you, the, the the second graph that was detailed with the residual bins, the organic bins, and the um, I forget the, the third one. Do, do forgive me, but um, the, the the other services that, that are provided. So once you 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 have that capacity, you, you clear the the noise for want of a better description. You have the ability to to react and respond much better. This is what this system would enable us to do. So what. The proposal, essentially, the equivalent number of rounds would be taking, um, Brian, uh, forgive me, would be taking essentially nine rounds off the curbside system. Uh, 11. Eleven rounds off the curbside system, do forgive me. Um, and then moving forward, the core level of commingled rounds would be four. So clearly you can understand there's a, there's a def definite benefit in, in freeing up resource there. What we would propose as well, because we accept some residents have not had um, a regular collection on their scheduled collection day, which is absolutely a place that we want to get this service to, and we, we know you want this service to be at. Um, that would, in the first two weeks where there may be additional volumes built up, we would, we would supplement those commingled rounds with a further two um, rounds just to ensure that for those two weeks, and, and, and actually if there was still significant material out there, we would prolong that um, until the, the rounds had settled and the material had cleared. Um, it, as a comparator, from mid-April when those first three phases had rolled out, those four rounds will essentially be the equivalent of more resource than you were having on the, the SAC collection before. So there is resilience in doing that also. So it would absolutely suppress the, the the high red bar that we saw on a on a on a previous graph and creating that that additional capacity to um to, to clear the material down the the other thing and the other resilience within this plan that that would enable us to do the the night the first three phases are essentially delivered by a core of nine um resource recovery vehicles the, the curbside sort the larger ones the 12 ton vehicles we would also have the ability um, in freeing up some of that resource to supplement in some of the more restricted access areas of the, the borough to, to supplement. There was an additional seven and a half ton rounds, which we've got the vehicles for, in order to improve and settle those those first phases to, to a level that was um, better than you'd seen on that graph as well. So essentially, more focused resource delivering on a regular basis to the residents of South Hems, um, getting a regular recycling collection on their scheduled day. Is 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 the basis for the uh, the recommendation, um, and what that would enable us to do as a business, because we we've alluded to the fact that the number of vehicles and the congestion, the unproductive tip time at the depot and transfer station is is causing, um, driven by the volumes, is causing the 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 the, the significant level of um, underperformance at the minute. It would enable us to create more capacity. Um, because we are looking in, in terms of the broader plan to secure more land to, to move the vehicles um, to another site in order that we can create more capacity at the transfer station to take more materials and tip in a more effective manner when we go back to, to um, refreshing and resetting um, the Devon Align service moving forward. So the benefits are more capacity, more resilience, more ability to react in the short term, enabling us to provide more capacity in, in an infrastructure sense to enable the service to move forward um, uh, at the point at which we've, we've created that additional capacity. I'm mindful I have probably rambled on. There may be more specific questions on the technicalities of, of the proposal, which we'd be happy to field, but um, I'm in danger of losing my train of thought, so I would, I'd hand over to, to any members or any questions. Unless, of course, Brian wanted to add anything to what I've just said. So yeah, there's just a, a couple of points that I wanted to, to, to sort of very quickly make. Um, when it comes to, to the staffing levels that we've got, and we, we, we say about this COVID, which I, you know that, that was a one-off, um, just this week we have had three people walk away. Um, we've, had, we've lost three drivers because they've got better jobs elsewhere. Um, we are sort of seriously looking at pay rates, which are, yeah, the, they're in the ballpark of the area, but uh, we, we think we need to, to, to look at those, so we, we are looking at that. 
We are having problems getting drivers in. As we said, we've got vehicles available. We just can't get drivers. Um, part of the plan is that the commingle collections would continue to present in their boxes so we could keep the education going. So when we can turn the Devon Align service back on, the, the residents are used to um, still continue to segregate. If there are problems with segregation, we will let the residents know, but we will take the waste anyway. Obviously, it would be silly not to, but as I say, we can, we can continue with that. Um, it would also allow us to um, look at the vehicles moving forward because the, the, the vehicles that we're, we're trying to do this service with at the moment, which we are getting off of the higher market, are not not the ideal vehicles for the service that we've got. They're not the same as the, the, the seven and a half tonnes that we've got because those are just not available on the higher market. Um, so it would allow us to, to purchase the correct vehicles um, moving forward. And, and the other thing is, is throughout this, um, you know, we, will, we have committed, um, we will retain all of the staff that we've got and try and keep those levels up so that when we do start to roll out the service, we have got those staff available. Obviously, staff will leave, and you know, but we will we will try to recruit to the levels that we know we need at the point that we will we will start. Rather than we're going to lose some crews, that's some rounds. We're not going to lose any crews. We have committed to to employ those vehic uh, those people because they will assist us in in sort of catching up on those misses that that will inevitably happen. So um, that's that was all I had. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Councillor Pearce? Um, yeah, well, thank you to Mr Molyneux and, um, and to um, Mr Ashby and Mr Barnfield for um, their presentations. But um, FCC, gentlemen, um, I do wonder how we've got to where we are. Um, we understood that FCC was a company with long, long experience in this business and... Um, saying on its website that it carries out the service competently for a number of councils. And we know somewhere it's not so good, but, you know, on the whole, it's not bad. But you really seem to have let us down. The chaos of the round changes. You don't seem to have got the design of the depot right. And I believe we spent a lot of money building it to your specification. You seem to have got largely the wrong size vehicle for vehicles for a lot of the rounds. Uh, you seem to have underestimated the amount of recycling. And whilst you say the tonnages are up, we can't believe we're that far away from other districts and the other um, amounts wouldn't bear that out. Um, have you allowed for second homes? And you seem to have a central staff missing at all levels. They don't seem to be supervisors in your depots. You just don't seem to have the right staffing levels. And so you are proposing changes... Um, people are going to get a service, and I'm sure they're going to be really pleased after so long to get a service back again. But it's not the service that we were expecting you to deliver. So we are disappointed, to say the least. Um, we probably haven't got much option but to accept the, um, the proposals because we do want our residents to have a recycling service once again. Um, but the people who are still on the bags are going to be on them for some time, and they were expecting to go to um, a proper um, Devon aligned service, and they're not going to get it. So can you explain to us how you have managed to get so many things wrong that have, have culminated in this terrible situation we're in at the moment, and the fact that we're going to have to accept a less than ideal situation moving forward because we do want everybody to have the collections that they're rightly expecting to get. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Pearce. Um, look, we, we, we totally understand um, your disappointment and the disappointment of fellow members and residents of um, South Hamson, and again, we, we apologise for those that have been affected. In terms of, um, I've just noted down it in sort of bullet form some of the points you made. Um, what we, we have said as part of the action planning in the period that um, should this get this recommendation get approved, it would allow us to um, review um, the rounds in light of, of some of the issues that, that have been identified and experienced, which which would be in some sense typical of a round change anyway, because there is 
always fine tuning, but we, we will take a look at that in order to, to understand whether it needs to be more fundamental. In terms of, um, uh, and I, I alluded to this, I think, at overview and scrutiny last week, in terms of the design of the, the depot and transfer station, look, it's, it's a tight site, but the reality is the design, as I understand it, was done on 2018 data. Um, and a lot of the volume increase, and this is this is UK wide as well, um, as a result of COVID, the, the, the tonnages authority by authority have increased. And the system you have here, um, in terms of moving from a, a SAT collection to the curbside source system, which is kind of a, a future-proofed collection system that that meets all the sort of um, the the tick boxes of the. the the government's resources and waste strategy, any any significant increase in volume that the systems, whether that's vehicles bulking out, as I talked about last week, or even the number of bulk vehicles out of the, the transfer station, it is particularly sensitive. And and the, the volumes um, <laughs> in 2018, the, the, the volume impact of, of the pandemic is not something that um, would necessarily have been factored or understood. So. Um, what we, we need to understand as this period of time will enable us is to understand the longer term impact of that when the service beds in and the longer term impact from a societal point of view as to, to people's behaviours with work office um, and and that ability. Now, it's a positive news story in terms of the, the, the volume and tonnage increases, um, but as I say, the, the capacity and, and the volume increases, and this is experienced across the UK, pretty much any authority and through all our sites, um, volumes are up, and, and that is something we're experiencing here. Um, in terms of the, the, the supervision point, which I know is, is one that, that we've spoken about on a number of occasions, we accept that um, <laughs> that is is something that needs bolstering. We are recruiting. We have um, deployed other supervisors from some of our other contracts across the UK to support us in, in recent weeks, and I believe some of those are keen actually to, to, to stay down here. So um, that's something that's in flight. We accept that um, that that on the ground management of the service is something that, that, that will get better going forward accepting that the, the challenge that these guys have at the moment is is extraordinary because of the the, the point that was made earlier you guys are overwhelmed um, in some instances your residents are and certainly as a contractor we are as well in terms of being able to manage that down so we have done and put things in place to try and rectify that but just to, to reiterate we as again to, to those residents that have been affected we apologize and and we, we totally get your disappointment thank you I, I do have one or two names here. If um, you want to ask a question, I know it's a little bit like going back to school here, isn't it? And if there's anybody at the back and I can't see them, just put, just wave at me, please. But I have got I've got a list here, and if I don't call you, um, you know, wave at me, please. Okay, Councillor Pierce, do you want to come back on anything that Mr. Barnfield has said? Right, Councillor Taylor. Right, we're away. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, a couple of questions, really, um, for FCC. Um, they seem to be giving us information that we're taking back to our residents, and they seem to be just empty promises up to now. They've been three months uh, into this new system, and what makes them so sure that they can actually correct it in the next six months? Um, because it, it becomes a bit of a nightmare. And the other thing is, have they done any investigations on the local villages that we actually serve on access um, for the for the recycling lorries? Because I mean, there's a couple of villages that they just can't get out, and unless they know where they are, I mean, it's no good sitting in an office looking at a map because you can't actually see exactly what it is. Um, so, have they done any on the ground investigation on how they're going to manage that? Thank you. I assume I can step in and answer that. I was just going to ask. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Taylor. Um, with regards to what makes us so sure in the next six months, if I pick up that point, I might ask Brian to just um, um, provide some more detail on the access information. 
what we are suggesting is going back to a point in time where we knew uh, and we've taken some of the, the difficult access properties off those first three phases where we we know it was working um, for the curbside collection service so we are confident that that will um, get to that place again it also from the transfer station point of view um, takes 11 vehicles out that are causing the congestion at the transfer station you, you'll have a core of nine so it's, it's visible when you're on site in terms of the the vehicles waiting to tip that that very simply will relieve that pressure to a point that we know it can be delivered and what we do know with the commingle service um, which is is more efficient from a collections point of view in terms of the properties you can get to that's that's eminently deliverable what what we um, are asking um, approval for essentially with the action plan is to to provide the time to to increase that capacity and free up that bottleneck at the the, the Ivy Bridge transfer station and depot. Um, we're already um, in discussions with people with regards to additional land, and uh, I can't go into too much detail about that at the moment. But in in terms of putting ourselves in that position, and once we 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 have that, um, the Ivy Bridge site can be um, adapted to to accommodate. It also, as Brian has alluded to, enables us, uh, and we understand vehicle lead times for the specific vehicles that would be required, uh, the, the the better seven and a half tonners, for, for want of a better description, um, and it aligns with that. So what we're asking is is essentially um, to, to, to be able to um, very quickly provide your residents with a, a regular uh, collection service on their scheduled day is that time to to create that additional capacity but in terms of the service moving forward for the, in the short term it, it will bring those um, numbers down um, uh, quite drastically um, Brian uh, in terms of the access um, investi investigations and with regards to the vehicles is there anything you, you can add on that point? Um, yeah um, the, the advantage of moving back to to the commingle collections is that they can be done on a 15 ton RCV which we know will get to all of these properties because that's what we used to collect them on so that that will give us the breather um, we did for the first nine um, uh, for the first nine rounds we did drive those rounds um, we did as, as much as we possibly could on the on the other rounds um, I think in, in hindsight, I mean, we obviously we used a, an experienced member of staff who, 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 who did that for us. Um, we would have possibly been better off getting a, an inexperienced member of staff to do it because one of the problems that we've, we've got is the, the additional drivers, a lot of the additional drivers that we've got have never driven what, we, what we're asking them to do, the way we're asking them to do, and they are having serious problems getting the vehicles into places which an experienced driver would, would get them quite easily. So... Well, this will also give us the chance to, on a round-by-round -round basis, you know, get the right vehicle, drive that round before we introduce it, uh, and make sure that everything is in place before we do it. Um, and the time scale will give us the time to do that. So, in essence, the the resident will just have a a, a seamless transition from a commingled collection. They'll put it out one week commingled, and then the following week we will pick it up as part of the. Uh, the Devon Line service, but obviously we we've got to get there and get those drivers experienced enough to do the job. Oh, wrong button. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't quite know where to start. Um, uh, um, each councillor here should have more than five minutes, but clearly we haven't. Each councillor could probably spend significantly greater period of time of that, giving you a list of the things that have gone wrong and a list of the excuses that we've had for them not be, for, for FCC not, not delivering. Um, I've got a note in front of me which was handed to, to me by a parishioner at a parish council meeting, and the heading is, the service has completely failed in this parish. And I think that's a good summary. Um, what I've listened to today and on Thursday was by and large a list of reasons why that happened. And to be perfectly blunt, residents aren't interested in the reasons why it happened. They just know that they've got rubbish on their doorsteps, sometimes up to seven weeks uh, old, and it's not being collected. 
Um, and from the plan that as little as I've seen on the screen today, some of them won't have that for quite some time. Um, so they're finding the reasons that are being given for the non-delivery of service to be perfectly blunt, an insult, an insult to their intelligence. And in my ward, certainly a lot of the residents may well be aged, but they're not in that sense. They can understand the difference between collection and non-collection. And when you talk about maintaining segregation of waste, even though we'll collect it in a compactor, they are intelligent enough to stick all their rubbish in a single bin, have it compacted, and you sort it out somewhere else other than on their front doorstep. And maybe that's something you ought to consider. Um, the, the common theme that's coming through from parishes, my parishes at least, is they're not getting any response to their inquiries. These reports are coming through to FCC and often being ignored, and that is inexcusable. Um, and they see parish council, uh, sorry, they see district councillors, including myself, spending a huge proportion of time trying to sort out these queries, and we get back messages saying, thanks very much for reporting it, but we're not going to come and collect the waste anyway, even though we missed it. Councillor Spencer, and, can I just remind you, we're, we're not debating yet, actually. We're, we're on question. I, 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 have I, know a question. You're, I know you're angry. I, I am angry. Yeah, so um, you're all. And, uh, but I do have a question, which this is leading up to. Um, the question that I've been asked by all three of the parishes that I've had uh, calls to, to, to do meetings with over the last couple of weeks is a single question. And I would like an answer today, please. And the question is that they feel that the only way that you can truthfully understand what the problems are is to be on the ground. So each three parishes have invited you to their meetings and they would like your assurance that someone will attend so that you can talk to them firsthand and understand the nature of exactly what the problem is. Because by and large, they don't think that you actually do understand. So can I have a response, please? Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Uh, with, with regards to, to that, we'll, we'll, we'll happily take that offline, understand when those meetings are, and we, we can um, see what we can do with that um, right here and now. don't know when they are, where they are, um, but um, let, let's take that away. We'll happily receive that as a question and um, respond accordingly. Can I come back? Sorry. Yes, you can, uh, Councillor Spencer. I, I'd like an assurance that someone will come, even if it's not your good self or your colleague, that someone will come to those parish council meetings, because that's what my residents want me to come back with from today. Uh, yeah, sorry, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll take it away. If we know where and when, we can come back and we can, we can detail a, a, a response to that. Thank you, Chair, but I don't think my question was answered, but there you go. Um, Councillor Callaghan, please. Thanks, Mr Chairman. I totally agree with the, the last speaker. I um, don't really know where to start, but um, I'll start by saying um, how can we have any confidence uh, that you're going to be able to provide in any way a competent service? For example, when the um, last couple of days um, had yet more complaints from assisted collection uh, recipients, elderly, vulnerable people, um, not had any assisted collection for six weeks. Now, why is there no priority given to assisted collections? The clue is in the title. Assisted collections are for those who are not able to deal with collections in the normal way. There appears to be no sense of priority or urgency. Week after week, it's reported, it goes into a black hole, and these are not happening. And these people are telling me that when their relatives and family come down on holiday, they ask them to go and take their stuff to the tip with them. Now, what a disgrace that is. They have to ask their family to take their own recycling and rubbish that they paid for and their council tax. They have to ask other people to take them to the tip for them. Now, I thought you might like to know that, because really, it's a dis like I say, it's, it's really not acceptable. And... They should have been prioritised. Not only are they not prioritised, but they're left for six weeks, um, which is a lot more than some people are being left. And I've got an email I've just opened now um, from Sheltered Housing in Kingsbridge. 
uh, Salt Key moorings, and one of our officers at South Hams was saying, it's on a visit to Salt Key, it looks like it was missed again last week. This is sheltered housing for elderly people. When I entered the middle communal area, some lovely photographs, looks like the third world country, I was greeted by what could only be described as a swarm of flies. How lovely. Commissioner Callaghan, can, pick can it up? you please keep, keep to the yes. questions? I know we're all angry. We'll do a debate in a minute, yes. but just you've so, asked a very good question, and I don't yes. disagree about yes. um, assisted collections, and that is one of the ones that irks yes. me quite a lot. The question so is that can, yes. we have, can we have an answer to that? Yes. Sorry, yeah, um, thank you, Councillor. We agree assisted collections are, are a priority um, and should be treated so and should be actioned. I think in terms of the scale of the, the um, misses at the minute, um, if that's happened, then it's, it's, it, it isn't an acceptable position to be in. And um, I think one of the advantages of... Um, the plan it will enable us to respond and react a lot quick, a lot, a lot more effectively to to these these issues, which we agree are a um, a priority, particularly for those residents that that haven't had a uh, a collection for a number of weeks of, of their recycling uh, material or food waste. So, um, absolutely noted. Um, um, we will and, and we, we do address that. And uh, Brian, I'm not sure whether there's anything you wanted to add, particularly on the, the assisted point. Want um, the the yeah, yes um, I I personally you know at the time that I've been here um, and and in the industry uh, I totally agree that uh, assisted collections are the should be the priority absolutely and you know they are very often the most the most vulnerable in society so you know I we have started to try and analyse those those collections the the problem is yeah it, it's not that yes we are missing assisted collections but equally we are not getting to those houses, so that has to be our priority to, to get to those houses. And yeah, I I can only apologise. I don't want anybody's parents having to do things like that. I yeah, uh, I, I really don't. But it, it it is it is this sort of overwhelming nature, and we've just got to try and make sure that we get to the properties in the first place. Retraining of the staff because of the staff turnover that we, that we are experiencing. You know, the assists do come up on their their, their systems. Um, We've just got to make sure that they actually know what that means when it comes up. Um, so, you know, all of these things are ongoing at the moment. And again, all I can do is apologise at, at the moment. And we are trying to prioritise it. And we are definitely, definitely taking it seriously. Thank you for that. Um, me members, I'm going to say something now. I'm not trying to cut debate or question, but if a councillor, we haven't got there yet. But I can probably see in a minute we'll get to the situation where somebody has already asked your question. It's no uh, reflection on you if you say, well, Councillor so and so already asked that question. Otherwise, we're going to have a very long day. And I'll, I'd want to get this to resolution and for, for the benefit of the residents. Uh, Councillor Brown, I think, is next on the list. Thank you very much, Chairman. And um, I echo the comments made by <coughs> most colleagues thus far in that found myself on many occasions over the last few weeks seemingly banging my head against the wall. Um, uh, two questions, if I may. Um, the, the first, can we be clear that this long-term solution that you wish to have in place by the end of 2021, can we be clear to residents that we expect their waste to be collected before the end of this year? Um, and that it's not that we, you know, there's going to be six months of no waste collection whatsoever. I appreciate it's a long-term solution, but it needs to be made clear to residents that particularly those that have waited in some cases eight weeks, that their waste will be collected as a priority and imminently. And the, the, the gentlemen who have, have mentioned the difficulties with the industry at the moment in terms of retaining drivers and indeed other members of the crew. So, so what kind of assurance can you provide us with then? Because I realise this is really part of the crux of the problem. What assurance can you provide us with that you can retain these drivers in the long term? I realise that you know, you, you'll have a natural overturn of staff you know, anyway, as time goes on. But how can you reassure us that you will keep as many as possible and indeed there will be flexibility in your system and, and, and space in your system should you lose a few? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, so, so with regards to your first question, um, with regards to um, the six months and will they be collected by the end of the year, yes, the, 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 the plan is essentially saying 
in order to get to that, from a recycling perspective, a, a weekly collection or a regular collection on their scheduled collection day every week. That is what we're advocating. And the proposal in the plan is to um, subject to obviously your approval is to, for that to that essentially to take effect from next Monday. Again, subject to your approval. So very quickly, um, that position, particularly those that have um, uh, unfortunately had to wait um, for, for far too long, um, that will be rectified and cleared very quickly. So certainly not six months. The, the six months is to enable us to create enough capacity to then go back and, and re-roll out the, the rounds that we're suggesting that we move back and the, the final phase in order that, that everybody in South Hams is getting their um, Devon Aligned service collection moving forward. It's, it's the recycling collections will improve drastically very quickly as a result of the, the plan, which is essentially an interim measure uh, to, to enable us to create that, as I say, that capacity, um, which has been driven by the volumes. Um, in terms of the, the point around staff retention and drivers, I mean, it, it, it's, it's stark for us here and now because of the level of resource increase required um, to, to be delivering the service well uh, at the moment it, it's kind of a I think it's probably a, a three to four fold increase in drivers required for the current phases that we've rolled out from what was the old SAT collection so there was there's the recruitment bit in and then there's the retention bit um, it, it, it's a difficult marketplace I've got with, with other contracts that I'm responsible for we have uh, similar concerns and issues and and as a business, we're looking at um, bespoke local strategies in order to recruit and retain. So there's, there's a combination of um, making the job um, uh, as attractive as we can and absolutely having to look at pay rates to be able to compete with similar driver roles that are, are perhaps um, at the same sort of rate but considered um, more preferable for some drivers depending on their appeal. I mean... There is a national shortage there. That's not an excuse, and I know you may well take it as one, but it is a it is a problem that we're experiencing in this industry. I think the Road Haulage Association is so. We we know it's it's a problem, and we have um, uh, we have real um, commitment to to put things in place to to recruit and retain. In terms of what we we would do, and what is typical when you're recruit an additional resource for a service change that requires more resource we, we we take tend to take agency LGV drivers in on a sort of temp to perm basis so the, the intention is that I mean some we will lose quickly some we will retain some really love it and at that point in time um, we, we look to, to, to bring them um, and be an FCC employee after initial three months which is is the the way that um, would, would be typical to do that and we're still doing that we when we we've experienced stress a few weeks ago on this, it was it was difficult. We have deployed drivers from other parts of our collections business, and they have now started to come through. And we have actually already um, done done things with pay rates in South Hams to attract more drivers in. So we we know uh, it's a problem. We're doing everything we can. We're bringing in from other parts of the country. That the problem we have obviously is where you've got um, you know a couple of drivers leaving in a week when you you're at that. Um, stretch point it, it, it's a challenge to recover the advantage well, one of the advantages of the proposal we're putting in place is it, it gives us a little bit more or a lot more capacity to recover um, not only to deliver um, and complete on a day but also to rectify in a, in a more typical manner um, any misses so I think there's an example used where the message goes out that we, well we've, your collection hasn't been um, achieved today and we're not going to go back and get it. That message should very quickly change to we, we can now respond in a in more timely fashion, um, certainly in the interim period until we, we've created that capacity. Um, Brian, was there anything you wanted to add on the, the driver or the, the staff retention point? Um, the only thing that I, hand on heart, Council Brown, can, can say is I, I, I can't actually give you an insurance that we will be able to keep those staff. Uh, sorry? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the only thing that I was going to say is it, it is very difficult to give an assurance that we will keep those staff because they are individual people. Um, but we are looking at different options. We are looking at um, training people through to become drivers who have been with us for some time. 
We've even offered that to agency staff, which we, we wouldn't normally because they haven't been with us for, for what we perceive is long enough. Um, and we, ha we again, we are getting a trickle through there. The problem is that that is in itself um, a, a longer term solution because at the moment that is, it normally takes about three to four months to get somebody from um, getting their theory through to um, completing their test. It normally takes three to four months. It's taking slightly longer now because there is a, a huge backlog in the theory testing system anyway. So we do have allegedly, according to uh, the DVSA, um, you know, we can put them through as key workers. Unfortunately, most of the training um, uh, sector, you know, they don't have spaces for us. So we are probably getting them through a little bit faster than than, than the average person just just um, applying, but it, it is still extending it. But um, we, we've got several different sort of options and things that we're doing, and it may not be the same staff, but we are absolutely committed to try and keep to the same staff numbers as we need for the service from now. Thank you. Um, Steve, would you like to come in? Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, just in terms of the, the point around when we expect to see an improvement, um, in FCC's proposal that members will have all received a copy of, the bottom bullet on page six basically says that FCC are confident there would be a very quick improvement in terms of those residents that haven't re received a recycling collection on a regular basis, with the expectation that normal service performance, performance levels would be evident through management information by the middle of July. So what we're saying, Mark, as Mr. Balfield, is that by the middle of July, all residents will be back to normal performance levels in terms of collections. Is that correct? Uh, that that's that that's correct. Um, the the ability to, should you approve it, um, implement what we're saying in terms of some of the residents going back to a, a co mingle for those latter phases um, would enable us to do that. And the data at that point in time, um, we would expect to demonstrate that that improvement back to. Um, more typical performance levels. Now, that's not to say it, it will be perfect, but it will, we will also have the capacity to rectify anything that does come out. So the noise and the, the, the point around being overwhelmed um, should, should have gone away. So not at the contracted performance levels across all services. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that would be our intention, definitely, and that's what we're aiming for. I'll leave it for members to comment. Uh, right, next question the councillors, Councillor Smurden. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I note, uh, well, I've got a couple of questions for FCC and a couple of questions uh, for our uh, officers. For FCC, um, in your proposals, uh, where it says uh, you're, you're quite specific about reverting back to the end of phase three, etc., with your vehicles, etc., uh, and it also says additionally you're going to uh, pull off the two seven and a half ton purpose built vehicles co to collect from difficult and restricted access properties within the first rounds. Now, um, Within our ward, we've got narrow. You've, you've set up a couple of narrow access rounds, which on which you're using these um, seven and a half ton vehicles. If you're going to pull those off, um, what happens to the to those narrow access rounds, which I can assure you, you won't get anywhere near with anything bigger. Um, the other thing with regard to the drivers, um, you seem you've, you've, you appear to have got a pool of. Um, experienced drivers anyway because the uh, in my experience the black and grey bin rounds the drivers on those absolutely know where they're doing where they're going and they don't appear we don't appear to have the problems it's the recycling so why can you not tap into the pool of um, uh, experienced drivers that you've got and either you know transfer some of them across or or something like that um, as I say I've got a couple of questions for for our staff do you want me to ask those now or wait I think we'll tackle these first, Councillor Smurden. Thank you. Yeah. So the point of taking the uh, the seven and a half tons out, um, so they would be supporting those areas within the first phases, um, uh, restricted access. 
by replacing those essentially, so uh, without knowing the exact specifics, um, um, there shouldn't be any seven and a half ton narrow excess rounds which are not either going to get collected by one of the seven and a half ton vehicles or a uh, or go over to the co mingle collection. I mean, if, if you could give me some specifics afterwards, I could look at it, but the whole point is we should be able to get access if they're on a co mingled in the vehicles that we are proposing to use. Okay, um, fair but, enough. But and, and the other point is <laughs> it's um. We've had people leave uh, rather than go over to the uh, Devon and Line service um, when we've tried to force them from the refuse and the organics. Um, we we are playing a very very yeah it's a very thin line. We we do try. They do help us out very often verbally. They will go out at the weekends and help us, but they don't want to. And as you as you said yourself, they are a lot of those are very experienced. Um, they don't want to go and do the service, um, and those that that do have, those that haven't don't, <laughs> um, and it's it, it's a very thin line. Um, okay. As I say, right. We have had people leave. Thank you. Well, brilliant. Thank you. Um, right, and for our um, for our officers, um, for Mrs. Savage, possibly, um, when as members we uh, we log um, collections on the waste escalation service uh, you know, we're feeding in postcodes all the time um, is there you know I don't seem able to get any answers to this question is you know uh, when we look when that information is logged do you know um, does it improve matter you know does does that premises or those premises get logged onto the system and and their round you know their collection fall into the proper uh, you know, round order that it should do, because um, because you know that's the sort of thing that should be happening. I mean, otherwise, as members, you know, we're we're wasting our time. And uh, you know, and, and the final plea is, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, from from my point of view, I suspect from other members as well. Before there's any change made to to any anything within our wards, you know, for goodness' sake, let us know because. At the end of the day, you know, we're the ones who are firefighting this. We're the ones on whose, uh, you know, laptops all these um, complaints arise. And, uh, you know, I think we would all just appreciate knowing what changes are coming so that we can at least, um, you know, help prepare our residents for them. Thank you. Um, Chair, I'll answer the first bit, if that's OK. Um, so the first, the first point about the waste escalation... Uh, fundamentally it isn't working and the reason it's not working is because we do log the information we pass it to FCC and FCC don't have the resource and, and that's the first fundamental issue so we, we let FCC know they don't have the resource to go and pick it up but actually more importantly they don't have the management resource um, to analyse and investigate and, that, and that's the fundamental issue um, and in FCC's proposal one of our asks is about sufficient administrative support and su sufficient supervisory and management support to resolve that issue. In the interim, that's one of the reasons that we've put our team, so Dale Cropper is now based at the Tor Quarry Depot, trying to fix some of the issues with individual issues that get raised on the residual and the organic collections. And Sarah Moody and Matt Crimp are working uh, predominantly out of Ivy Bridge with the effort of trying to focus on improving the system and get better management information and discussions with FCC on resolving some of those issues. So that's what we've done to that. But I acknowledge, uh, Councillor Smurden, that it's not working. And uh, it's, it's, it's not good enough for you guys, it's not good enough for our residents, and it's certainly not good enough for us. And it puts us in a very, puts me and my team in, a, in an awful position where we can't help people, which is not how it should be. Okay, thanks for that honest answer. Did just on, on you know the, the the plea still stands that um, you know if there are going to be changes made, uh, you know, please let us as members know. Have you got that? <laughs> yeah, no, understood, and, and I think uh, just to, to supplement um, uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Molyneux just said. We know, and um, and I'm doing something about the the uh, bolstering the supervision from our point of view. In terms of the administration, that's also 
plan administration um, and what we have done in the interim is, is get additional support from other contracts. I think, suffice to say, and I've made the point a number of times, by accepting the the plan on an interim measure, the the, the number and scale um, of those issues will diminish, so the pressure on that resource should, should alleviate as well, or will alleviate. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Coach Jackson. I can't quite Thanks, see Chair. you behind yeah, Coach Thomas I'm, I'm here. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, my question was going to be about recruitment and um, retention of staff. And you did say last week that you used an agency. And I just wondered, since you're having so many problems and three staff have walked away this week, whether, and you said you were going to use bespoke local strategies. Can you tell us a bit more about what they are? You sort of alluded to a, a pay increase, but is there anything else that you'd offer people to come and work for you? There are a number of things that, that we're exploring um, in terms of it, and, and Brian has alluded to some of the um, internal training. And just to give you some context to, to, to get to the level of driver we need, that's normally something that people do professionally themselves. In instance, in instances like this, we're looking to to, to, to offer that um, as a business. We're also talking about other things that, um, uh, in order to retain those staff, so incentives to retain those staff for, for a period of time, which I don't want to go into too much detail because there's, there's a bit of commercial sensitivity with that. Um, and, and one of the things that, that we do know in this sector um, that, that, that it has appealed historically to drivers is that the nature of the job, um, if if the rounds and the, the day's work is achievable and not as uh, stressed and stretched as it is at the minute, um, will also enable retention. So once we suppress the issues that we've got at the minute we can see the wood for the trees in terms of rectifying any issues that rem remain um, that that appeal um, plus other associated benefits of working for, for a large organization so th there are a number of things we're looking at that, that are not typical for this sector um, in order to, to to recruit and and retain those staff uh, thank, thank you, you. And, and just one more quick question. Would you say a thousand a day miscollections is catastrophic? I would say it's totally unacceptable. Um, and we accept that. And for those residents that are affected in terms of the incompletes, which is essentially what that number is, um, we apologise again. All right. Uh, Commissioner McKay. So. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, um, um, okay. The um, first thing uh, I'd like to say was uh, what Councillor uh, Pierce said right at the beginning. Uh, took the words right out of my mouth, and it's not often I, I can say that. So uh, I just wanted to emphasise that I thought uh, what was said there was uh, was on the money. Uh, the other thing is that. Um, uh, I've read through the, the proposal uh, from FCC, and I've also read the uh, council's response. And I have to say also uh, uh, congratulations to um, to the team that uh, asked these questions. Can you talk to your mic? You've gone sorry, quiet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, the uh, the questions are, uh, are are exactly the questions that I would ask, but there's a few more that I, I would ask. Uh, uh, well, there's a couple that. I know that it says at the end that uh, you wanted uh, answers to these questions by the end of business yesterday. Um, I assume that this presentation and what's up there doesn't reflect that because uh, there's, a, there's things like um, the spitting of bags, which I think is a mad idea that you said was a mad idea. Uh, I take it that that is no longer uh, going, to, going to happen, for instance. The spitting of bags on, on the pavement prior to going into the... Um, so we've, we've, we have challenged FCC on that, and their latest proposal has given us more details. I don't know if FCC want to explain that process, because we did challenge that. John, we can't, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put that mic a bit closer to you. Sorry, sorry, yeah. it had gone off for some reason. I don't know. Um, the, vo the volumes issue, um, I, I don't really understand. I mean, the, the, you, you've given timescales, and you've also not given any commitment that by the end of uh, or mid-July that the um, 
the service would be back to at least regular collections, even, even if it's not recycling collections. Um, we've got a pretty good idea what the volumes are. I would have thought, I mean, this is a, to use the jargon, a deterministic problem. You, you must be able to work out the, the number of vehicles, the time it's going to take to empty them. You must be able to come up with a, uh, and I've, I've not heard any of these figures, which I, I think are crucial to having confidence in this, uh, in the proposal. And, and quite honestly, uh, so far, what I've heard, and uh, uh, I'm, I have absolutely no confidence that this is actually going to work, but because uh, it, it does seem to be uh, a little bit uh, treated like it's, you know, you're trying to predict the weather or something. I, I don't believe it's that difficult a problem, and I would like to have a commitment uh, that uh, uh, that we are back to normal mid-July, and I'd also like to have a, a, a day, an, a, a time period, as to when the backlog will be cleared. Um, because clearly that's uh, a, a pathway to um, getting to the point where we are actually on an even keel uh, without regard to the recycling. Um, there's there's the, the business of splitting sacks, which I, I, I'd, uh, I'd like a question to uh, answer to. Uh, you also talk about the, the 3.5 tonne vehicles, which don't seem to get a mention at all. Um, and I know that down my road and down other roads uh, down uh, uh, in, in, in my ward, um, these have been used, uh, and, and, and to some effect, although the, the crews were having a really hard time uh, putting recycling stuff into separate dumpy bags on the back of a 3.5 tonne uh, vehicle, but at, at least they could actually get down, get down the, uh, the, the lanes. Um, so I'd like an answer as to whether you're going to use them at all. Um, clearly that goes beyond the 7.5 tonnes, which you, you, you seem to be suggesting that you might be phasing out at some point. But, um, and the final thing, which is probably a, a, a question for um, uh, officers, is about the logs. Um, is it possible that, that whenever something's logged, uh, we can actually see the log of, of, um, uh, on, uh, on, on the website or, or somewhere, uh, so that we can actually see those things that are logged, it will give us confidence that it has been logged, and also just a status of where it's at. So, I mean, it would be a, a fairly simple bit of IT. I don't know if that's possible to, to set up in... in uh, so. Uh, that's that, those are my questions. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor McKay. Um, in terms of the sorry, I don't know, the, the bag splitting question, we um, the officers questioned um, that element of the um, action plan last night, to which we responded last night and provided a bit of detail. I'll, I'll let Brian come in to, to, to further, um, but it's a short term measure for what those properties that we haven't collected to that have got that additional capacity that we would. Um, which is why we'll have those additional rounds on the commingle collections in the first two weeks to um, enable us to do that. Going forward, um, we're suggesting that, that residents present the material in the, the containers that have been provided for the new service, and then that's for, for FCC to deal with um, on the collection. So it, it's essentially a, a back-end change to the system. The residents would continue to present, but the, the bag splitting is to reduce the build-up of volume where there hasn't been uh, regular collections, and, and Brian, Brian may want to add something there. Um, the, the, the point around uh, regular collections, and uh, uh, apologies for confusion, we do expect them to be back to, to regular contractual performance levels by mid-July. That, that's the intent of what we're doing. The reality is we expect to have, a, you know, subject to approval, a very significant um, impact from the first week of doing this. Um, but that's why we, we, we have bolstered the first two weeks with additional resource just to cater for anything that's unexpected, which is beyond what would be normally expected. Um, uh, in terms of the the backlog point, Brian may want to add something. I know it was picked up in um, overview and scrutiny last week um, with regards to um, uh, improvement and, and clearing down on the backlog. And, and, and I think Brian may have some information just to update from where we were uh, last week. Um, in terms of uh, the point you made around no confidence in what we're proposing working. Look, I, we understand the um, the concern you, you have um, with with where we're at, but, but what we're essentially saying is going back to a point in time um, where it was broadly working with essentially additional resource to, 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 to recover and improve the situation with actual learning from some of those rounds anyway. So you know, if you if you reverse that back 
and supplement with additional resource to rectify. Um, there is no reason why it wouldn't work. Um, is, is my suggestion there on the the uh, the backlog and the, the three and a half ton? I don't know if you want to add anything on the the bag splitting, Brian. I don't know if you can um, come in on that. Um, as far as the backlog is concerned, um, with, with the vast majority of the, the, the problem properties, I'm not saying the problem, <laughs> our getting to them, not the properties being a problem, um, we'll go over to the commingle collection because they are the ones that are on the last uh, couple of rollouts um, and are the ones that are causing us a problem. Um, I fully expect and we plan to have, have visited all of those within the first week. It, if it becomes a volume issue, certainly within the two weeks, but I, with the extra vehicles that we've got and the amount of properties those vehicles will have to pass to achieve what they need to, um, there, is, there is no reason why we shouldn't catch up the vast majority of the backlog in that first week. Um, if there is a hangover and, and there are areas that, you know, for, for one reason or another, uh, we, we're not aware of, don't get to, etc., then they will certainly be done within the second week if not as caught up in the first week. So the backlog issue, I think, is you know, we are talking weeks away from having that resolved. The bag splitting issue, it is an issue, and I, I know it is. Um, the problem is that we have no outlet for collected bags with containing glass, and the residents will undoubtedly have put glass in these bags um, where they have got the capacity and the boxes to do it. So those properties, we have to split those bags because we have no outlet for them otherwise. Um, again, it should only be a, a one week stroke two week problem because after that, we're not collecting bags, they should all be in the boxes. So it, it, it is an issue, we acknowledge it, it is an issue, um, but unfortunately we do, not have, we do not have an outlet for it if we pick up the bags and don't split them. Um, and three and a half ton vehicles, they are broadly working at the moment. Um, not, not 100 percent, but we are not we are not looking to withdraw those three and a half ton vehicles from the areas where it is obvious only they can get to. And the final point, and I, I do apologise because I didn't get the councillor's name, about um, we're not looking to phase out the seven and a half tons. We're looking to replace them with purpose built vehicles rather than the the stillage vehicles that we are the only vehicles that we can get hold of on the higher market. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve, would you like to would you like to say something? Yeah, just to give some clarity about the bag issue. Um, we are talking here about the collections that are going back on the coal mingled for those first two weeks. So it's the eleven thousand properties that are going on to the co-mingled round. The 8,500 that are still on blue and clear sacks will still carry on with blue and clear sacks being collected the way that they are being collected. So we're, we're talking about, uh, as um, Mr Ashby says, it's, it's that first two weeks where residents may have got multiple miscollections and have been putting their additional waste in bags. What we don't want to do is leave those bags so that's why FCC don't want to do is leave those bags. But the, the remaining 8,500 properties, the Phase 4, which are already on bags, will carry on on bags, and they won't be split at the roadside. They will just be stuck in the back of the wagon. This is just for those properties that may have glass in and so on. So it's, it's a different collection method, and it's short-term for a couple of weeks. Can I just... Oh. Thank you. Um, Council of Brazil. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've got five questions. I'll try and make them brief. Two of them I, I asked. They're different to the ones we've already. Yeah, heard. they are. Two of them I asked last week, so I hope that that may they should have answers by now. First of all, is um, would it be possible to see the contracts that you have with Virador to separate the co-mingled waste at the Chelston Meadow branch? Uh, my second question is, um, how many recycling lorries do you use in West Devon? Um, my third question is, on the, the last point of the, of the, the slide that's up there, the long-term solution complete by the end of 2021, um, can I assume from that statement that we're talking about 
uh, as per the contract, i.e. everyone will be on the new recycling scheme, and will that be in budget as per the contract that was signed back in, uh, whenever it was, 20, 2018, 2019. Um, question four, I've read somewhere, it may not be new, that you say that FCC is taking it very seriously. Um, I think it's pretty poor show that your CEO, Steve Longdon, has not turned up at either of these meetings to issue a personal apology to residents of the South Hams. Um, he was all over us when it was signing the contract, but as soon as things goes wrong, he's conspicuous by his absence. I hope you can take that message back to him. And just following on from that, do you think it would be appropriate for FCC, including senior managers, to take some kind of pay cut in order to offer our residents a council tax discount on the services that have not been provided to them? And my last question is to Steve, and I hear that we've got managers embedded within FCC. How much are we being paid for, for that? Uh, thank you, Councillor Brazil. As I would expect, from fairly um, blunt questions. Uh, do you want to go first, Steve, and get that one out the way? Thank you, Chair. Um, so we will be recharging the costs um, with on costs. So that's the, the full sort of pension taxable costs for all our staff that are currently working supporting FCC. Right, gentlemen, would you like to tackle the other four questions? I'll, I'll certainly give that a go. Um, thank you, Councillor um, Brazil. Um, with regards to the uh, contracts with, with Viridor, I think the, the arrangements have, have um, recently been set up and obviously the, the plan is subject to approval. So um, with regards to the sort of commercial confidentiality, I just need to take that away and just double check what we can do. If we can, we will. If we can't, we can't. But um, we, 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 will, we will find that out. I know um, in terms of your question from ONS last week, the, um, the resource on West Devon, um, we have, um, we can, and, and I'll let Brian um, detail that in, in a second. Um, in terms of the, the, I think it's complete in 2021, that, that's, that's our intention to, to create that capacity. You, you asked the question um, within um, budget, I think that there's, I think in terms of the, the commerciality of, of the contract, that's something that, that we need to take offline. But I, I can assure you that at this point in time, resource to, to do what we need to do is not anything that we're um, uh, skimping on. Um, we, 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 we are committed to making this right. Um, look, we, we're absolutely taking it seriously. Your point um, with regards to, to Mr Longdon is, is noted. I will... I will relay that and I'm, I'm sure it's, it's obviously this meeting's a matter of, of public um, record um, and your point around um, uh, pay cuts to supplement I mean I've noted it's not anything that um, I can satisfactorily answer um, I have to say but um, I, I will note that and um, that's, that's it and Brian in terms of the West Devon resource did you could you just thank you so at the moment in in West Devon we are um, we have on purely the recycling, we have six of the 12 ton Rome equipped vehicles, which are uh, exactly the same as the ones that we have down here. Uh, we have two seven and a half ton stillages, um, which are not the same as the seven and a half tons that we've got down here, but they are, um, they, they pick up essentially the same materials. And then one four by four, which is a, the three, their three and a half ton equivalent. And that is to service 26,696 properties. Uh, I do have the other services, but I don't think they're really relevant for this discussion, but I can certainly forward them on to, well, to be fair, Steve and Jane know what they are. So um, I, I don't know how I'd get that information to you. Thank you. Coach Hotwood. Right, I'm going, I, I am going to, I think from all the questions that have been asked so far, answered all the ones I wanted and some besides, uh, we've been here an hour and a half, unless there is something really burning, um, totally different, um, 
I know you've got your hands up, but we've, we've been here an hour and a half. Um, I'll take them, but please keep them. I mean, Country Brazil put it across very well on how to ask questions. Um, and I'd like the same from everybody else, please. Uh, I'll go to Councillor uh, Small first, and then I'll go to Councillor Pano after that, okay? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't see you back in the corner. I did say if you could wait. If you, yeah, okay. If you've got something really different, um, I'll, I'll take you in as well. That's fine. Okay. Am I Councillor Small or am I Councillor Sweet? Sweet. I am very boring. Perhaps I've, well, never, I've, never that, had, I've had a few, but so not that one. You sat back in the corner back when you did that. Well, in the middle of here. Yeah, I well, know. I'm sorry, sorry. Councillor Sweet. Coach, yeah, and then... <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Pano, and then I'll, I'll take Councillor um, Hodgson as well, if she would, I believe she wishes to speak. So obviously some of this has been touched on, particularly by Councillor Jackson and Brown, but I am a bit confused still about the staffing and recruitment drive. I don't really hear that there is a really clear, specific recruitment drive, because you're answering things, answering questions with things like sort of try to recruit or looking at different options, exploring, looking to offer. I think what we need to know is the breakdown of the number of st staff that you're missing on every level, i.e. drivers, supervisors, and staff on the ground. And, you know, what, what is the drive? You know, how, how many staff are you looking for? What, are you paying the, the national um, living wage? Are you offering heart more than that now? You can't use it. It sort of sounds like you're sort of like just in the middle of it, and I, I'd like to see, and I'm sure other members would like to see, actually what it is, so we, so we can share the ad, so that we can actually share the um, employment opportunity around with our contacts, because it just, I understand there's a huge short, um, staff shortage over all manual, se manual sectors, but, you know, we need to know exactly what it is that you're looking for, and I, I, I'm not getting that you actually know yourselves. Um, are you actually um, consulting with the staff on the ground? Because when I talk to staff, they feel very unsupported and they feel that then they don't have a way to feed back the, need, the needs of their job so they can actually do the collections. Things like, you know, are you exploring collection points in cul-de-sacs? You know, would it be worth actually staff members walking down the road and picking the sacks up? and bring them to, to the end of a road. Because when you say things like, we've got inexperienced drivers driving those great big vehicles, it, that's terrifying. You know, that's like completely mad. So it, it just seems re really woolly. And I'd really like to know that those staff are being consulted with. Um, Councillor O'Callaghan touched on this, um, talking about assisted collections. I've heard that staff are experiencing way more assisted collections now, and they can't keep up with it. So I, I don't know whether it's um, South Hams or yourselves that sort of assess the criteria for assisted collections. But if, if there's, you know, we've still got this huge backlog of people not on the new system, there's surely going to be even more assisted collections. So I'm, ju I'm just really unsure that the, sta that the staff levels that you're ever going to have are going to going to um, cope with, with, the, with the rest of the collections that haven't even started. So are my, those are my questions. Can we please have a really clear um, email about what your recruitment drive is on all those levels and, and what, yeah, what is the um, criteria for assisted collections and how are you communicating with your staff on the, on the ground? Okay, can I... Try and answer that one. Um, all those. Um, uh, absolutely, yes. We can we can provide you with with uh, a breakdown of, of what we've got uh, and what we need. Um, I, I can understand it seems woolly, and uh, it, it yeah, I, I totally understand that. Um, the problem is we, we we have just about enough drivers at the moment. Um, a lot of those are agency drivers because that is the way. It's not really an FCC decision. It, that is the way that the industry, in the main, recruits. We, we as I mentioned last week, um, we don't get the walk-ins and, and things like that that we used to do. 
we, we advertise in papers throughout the country, we don't get those kind of responses. So most staff we actually take on through the agencies because that's where a lot of people go if they are looking for the types of jobs that we are looking to fill. Um, we do that on a 12-week a temp to perm. Um, and the reasoning it is a little woolly is because, you know, some people will get to some people will get to sort of eight weeks and just decide they don't want to come to us. Some people will get to eight days and decide they don't want to come. So it is a very movable feast. So we can actually, I can supply you with, with, with what we've got requirement-wise, what we have in place and who they are, obviously not names, but, you know, whether they are agency or, or full-time employment. Absolutely, we can do that. That's, that's, that's not a major issue. Um, and we can do that on all levels because we, we, have, we do have vacancies at all levels. Um, I'll be brutally honest. I mean, we have we have tried advertising on Facebook, which is the first time that FCC have ever resorted to that um, in this area. And again, we did get a couple of people come through that. So um, we are trying everything we can. We're not with a single agency. We have a we have a single uh, we have a, a national agreement with an agency provider. Um, but if if they can't provide us, we can go what we call out of panel. Um, and we have we have. Um, Agencies that are both in and out of panel, which is technicality, but we are looking everywhere for drivers um, in the area. We, I think, we've gone down as far as Saltash and places like that, um, Exeter. For what we pay, for, um, and it is above the minimum wage, but what we pay, you know, people don't want to travel that far for work, so we, we are getting very limited responses from those areas. Um, feedback from staff: Yes, we do do that. Um, we. We, we take their feedback, we um, uh, we analyse that, and then we will go back to the client um, because of, of ultimately things like a change of collection point is is a sort of an FCC stroke client decision. Um, there are a lot of those in the pipeline. Um, I think if there is a failing there, it is probably that we are not going back telling the staff that we are looking at that um, and we continue to look at it because they do very often take quite a lot of time to resolve. Um, so again, we, we, we can resolve that one fairly easily for ourselves and, and just keep that communication going. But as I say, that is that is a joint decision. Um, and yes, there is there has been a spike in assisted collections because of the boxes. Um, that is something which I believe uh, South Hams have a criteria for. Um, and I, I think that would probably be better if one of the officers answered that question uh, about how uh, assisted collections are allocated. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Council panel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I confine myself to a couple of brief questions that haven't been touched on. Um, I know a lot of residents in the South Brent area will be very disappointed they're not moving on to the new system for possibly six, six months. Um, sorry? I'm, just, I'm, I'm coming on to it. <laughs> that is the question. Um, is the target date of the end of 21 a, a target date, or is it possible that the, that will be brought forward? That's the first question. Um, I presume we will have to get, start putting all our food into the black bins if we're on the SAC system, as I think we've been instructed. Um, can you confirm that? Because if so, I think you're going to need a much bigger education campaign to persuade people to do that. And thirdly, there are some people who have not had a brown bin collection for up to six weeks who put, brown, who put food waste, as was correct then, into the brown bins. It's now going putrid and full of maggots. They are scared that when their bin is finally collected, they'll be told it, they, it won't be touched because there's food in it because, through no fault of their own. Um, uh, thank you, um, as a councillor panel. Um, in terms of the the date that we've put in for the end of this year, um, so sorry, is that is my mic working? Is that okay? Um, in terms of the, the date, that's that's a, a realistic date that, um, with what we need to do to create the capacity, um, vehicle lead times, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and um, build out some infrastructure and get associated permission. So um, that that's a realistic time scale. If that goes. Uh, better than anticipated, then absolutely we would speak to, to your officers to, to look to bring that forward. But what we've tried to do is put in a, a realistic target date. Um, in terms of the uh, the 
food waste going into grey bin for the 11,000 properties that we're recommending go on the co-mingled. Um, uh, that is, is the case, um, and that, that is the, the suggestion. I think that was the question, it, but it's just for those properties. Food waste will be, continue to be collected on the 26,000 properties that on the first three phases, and obviously the, the system, um, the other one won't. And Brian, I don't know, on the brown bin point, um, if you wanted to, to add any anything or, or add to that one for me. I'll get a difficult one. Um, I, I think what we'll have to do is have a have a uh, have a look at some of these properties that haven't had a brown co bin collection for so long. Because you're right. I think, well, morally and practically, um, we are the only people who can pick that up. So um, I will I will take that up with with my team and the officers and see if we can identify those because we definitely do need to get those collected. Um, but we will have to it will have to go on a dedicated vehicle because it's it's going to be. Um, probably mix, mixed loads that, that we can't accept down at um, Tor at the moment. So uh, I'd like to come back to you on that one. Um, just just a point about the DAS, just to add to to, to what um, Mark has said. I mean, the, the, there are positives, I'm sure you'll agree. But one of the one of the big positives of doing it the way that we're doing and trying to keep the co-mingled collections in the boxes is once everything is settled down, we, we could start introducing these, you know, with, with the proper consultation with, with, with yourselves in, in certain areas, um, um, pretty much overnight, um, you know, and, and start to phase those in once we've got to the state. So I think, you know, um, to use sort of, you know, six months is, is the backstop, but there is potential that we could start um, introducing services within that period with that being by the time it's fully implemented. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. So on that last point, that is entirely around my question. How are we going to convince people on a co-mingled service to continue recycling in boxes? I completely understand why we want that to happen. What no one has said here is that the Devon Line service is actually an outstanding service. My own rubbish has halved when I'm collected. It's brilliant. But we need to keep people on board. People who are getting commingled at the moment are not on site because they don't appreciate that the, the rubbish is, the re so recycling is still being recycled. It is absolutely imperative. And my question is whether it is an officer at Southampton's responsibility or Mr. Barnfield, whether it's an FCC responsibility. But I, I want to be assured that both the people on commingled now and the 11,000 who are going on to commingled are crystal clear where their recycling is going, that they are crystal clear that it is being recycled. And if they are being asked to separate paper from cardboard, only to watch it going in the back of a grabber lorry, that they are very aware that they are doing this so that their new service can start and they'll be ready to get on board with it. And I think that is absolutely imperative. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Steve, I think you'll have a go at that one. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so um, I alluded to earlier in the slides about using our locality offices. So we are ranging for those 11,000 properties that we will shadow those rounds um, when they start with localities. And in fact, we've already talked about um, the senior leadership team and the extended leadership team going out with localities as well, pushing um, with designing a, a, what will effectively be a card that we will um, either drop into the box or push through the letterbox, depending on, on the time permitted. But we will be making ourselves visible and available and communicating to residents to reassure them that they will still their services will still be, their, their products will still be being recycled, if that answers your question. It does. Thank you, um, Mr. Bonneau. And for the record, this councillor would happily join that team in his ward, and I'm sure other councillors will feel the same. Thank you. Um, councillor Long, do you still want to ask a question? Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll touch on one of the things we talked about the um, commingling and the recycling. Um, many residents believe that um, throwing glass, paper, card, plastic into the back of the compactor, um, they are still very doubtful that it will be recycled because of contamination. And I think we need to reassure, if we can, residents that it can and will be. Or I would like to see um, 
FCC informing us if full recycling is not achieved because of the co-mingling. So that is one question if they could answer that. Um, the other thing is there are still properties that um, do not have their recycling um, containers within phases five, six, and seven. Um, this has been reported in or others just residents have sort of given up. So obviously there are going to be blue and clear sacks presented as well at the same time. So are FCC aware of the properties that do not have the recycling containers and what are they doing to address that? Um, the other sort of question is really, I'm not hearing it that clearly, but I've got residents who are now up to nine weeks of no recycling collections. Are we really saying that they've got to wait another couple of weeks, or am I assured that um, they will be collected next week? You know, range between five and nine weeks. Next week they're into ten weeks, and I don't think really that's acceptable. So, you know, can you really um, inform me of that? And I'm pleased to hear what Steve said about, you know, um, localities shadowing and dropping out cards, but really we do need to know how you, and this is FCC, are going to inform residents about what is happening, what is changing, and to try and reassure them. And my other question is, has this mess with collections impacted other services to SHDC from FCC? And I'd also like to know whether the movement of localities into supporting this and other officers into supporting FCC, whether we will see as we're coming into the um, summer season a drop in the type of services that we were hoping that localities and others would be providing um, to the areas of um, the South Hams, um, whether we'll see a deterioration in that service as well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, on that last question, do, who's going to answer that one, Steve? Get that I, one out the way. I can answer that first, Chair. Um, I, I understand your concerns, Councillor Long, and I think we need to monitor it carefully. Um, however, this is, at the moment, the biggest crisis the Council faces, and we need to put all resources on that. I have, you know, I'm not doing anything else other than waste. Um, I've moved other people who are now just doing waste that would be doing other jobs. So it is having an impact across the wider organisation. It's having a massive impact on our contact centre in terms of the length of time that residents are queuing. If I could make FCC take all the calls, I would, but I don't believe they would deal with them any better. Um, so I, I'm not doing that, but um, it is having an impact. And, and again, the, the, the impact of FCC's failure to deliver the service is impacting all residents in all sorts of ways. Um, we will be monitoring localities, Council Long, to make sure that um, there is as little impact as possible. And if we need to move people back to their core jobs we will do as quickly as we possibly can and and certainly the conversation that we've been having you know with Sarah Moody and Dale in the depot they don't want to be doing that job that's not their job we want to help FCC get back to normal and that's what we're there for thank you Steve would you like to yeah thank you Councillor Long um, on um, some of the, the the other questions and, and do forgive me if I've, I've, I think I've noted them um, with regards to the um, uh, the, the co-mingling um, and the, the, the resident perception of what will happen we, I'll say it here and we're certainly discussing with the authority how it's communicated and the wording of the leaflets already been discussed but we can assure residents that for that material for those properties that are going on to that co-mingle service um, if, if approved um, with the material presented in the boxes it will be going to a recycling solution it will just be going to a mechanical sort facility that one of the uh, perverse advantages of, of this as well is in, in terms of the way the materials presented um, and, and one of the benefits of the Devon Alliance service is the quality of recycle it by that source segregation improved so the expectation would be that the, the, the value, uh, value that the quality of the material would be retained certainly after the first few weeks when the volumes have been um, um, pulled down. In terms look we will say again if it's five weeks if it's three weeks if it's nine weeks it's, it's not an acceptable uh, position. Um, I'm sure um, I mean, we'd like to understand where those are and address those, and I'm sure they're, um, well, they're, they're a clear priority. W will they be dealt with the next two weeks? That, that's certainly the intention with the proposal we're putting in place. 
Um, with those specific examples, I guess, if they're fed into the offices and us, we, we can particularly pick, pick those up because into, they kind of fall into the backlog category that, that um, Brian was alluding to earlier. Um, as I say, I, if, if this is, I mean, this is a public meeting, I, I can reassure residents that the, the recycling for that material um, is, is the, the dedicated outlet, even though it will be going into a, a single um, compaction um, vehicle. Um, obviously, the, the localities and other services. I guess the, the, the other question that I've noted, and, and Brian, you may be able to assist me on this one, is the container question. And if I've given you the hardest one again, apologies. No, 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 not at all. Uh, yes, we are, we are aware that um, there are still a considerable amount of containers to to deliver. Um, we've got we've got teams out doing that. Um, we have also brought in a, a third party from elsewhere uh, in the country who has who has delivered bins for us on a uh, a much more wider scale. Um, he's with us for four weeks. He only, he, first of all, he did only start on Monday, but he's with us for four weeks. He is he is an expert in delivering bins. If you thought that was needed, um, but it's it, he is very good at it, and and he has made some some inroads in it already, albeit on something that we've specifically asked him to do. So the numbers will continue to come down um, um, over the next uh, couple of weeks and. As of Monday, we will have some additional crews out doing it because they're doing some other works for us at the moment. Um, the point that you made about um, has this impacted on other services from FCC, um, that's very difficult to say because you know, thing, things like the, 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 the litter bin emptying, um, it, there are different resources. The problem is that we're having the same problems filling the resources for that service as we are for this service and obviously by virtue of what we're doing we are we are reducing the pool of people that are available for that so um, ultimately yes I would say it probably is affecting some of the other services but 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 not directly by anything that we're doing other than trying to employ people um, Councillor Hawkins very quickly, question. Um, in the new plan, can FCC guarantee that any missed collections, what the actual how many days will be that collection collected by, instead of, as we've all had, weeks? Eight. I've had eight and nine weeks in my patch. Can we have a guarantee of how many days that will be? Yeah, sorry. In terms, yeah. So the part, of, as I think I've alluded to, part of the benefit of the plan is it, it frees up the resource to rectify. So it should get back to um, contractual rectification period. So we should be going back the, the next day. Is the plan, Chairman? If thank I you very much, Chairman. If I may just clarify that. So yes, that's two days. The contractual um, service level for going back to a miss bin is by the end of the next working day of the day it was reported. So if the resident reports their bin on a, a Tuesday, um, then FCC should go back by the end of Wednesday. And the resident gets up to two days to report their miss bin. So if the bin was missed on a Monday, they report it up to a Wednesday, then FCC should go back by the end of Thursday. So just to be clear, so that's what we'll be expecting FCC to get back to. Thank you. Councillor Abbott. Thank you. At the start of this, uh, FCC were asked to explain what went wrong. I've heard more than once that there's more cardboard since COVID. The 2018 assessment of waste and recycling is irrelevant. You're an organisation with many contracts and the wider company will have experienced the growth in cardboard quantities over the last 18 months. Similarly, I've heard more Thank than... You. Uh, I know we're... Can you, can you make it into a question? I will. We'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have all this again in a minute. Uh, 15,000 LGB drivers missing since January 21. This is not a South Ham's issue. I would like to know what, what the error is, not be of suffer obfuscation. I'd like to know what went wrong, which has not been answered at the very beginning. Should I ask specifically when you say 
what went wrong? I mean, in terms of why we're in the position we are here today, is that... Yes, the because the answer that you gave before is associated with cardboard and with drivers, and yet these are not South Ham's issues. Uh, okay, so just, just to, 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 to explain where I was, uh, as I described it last week, it's, it's not just a cardboard issue, it's uh, multi-stream. There's significant increases in plastic cans, cardboard, um, uh, glass, um, albeit glass is newly introduced for those residents that have had the, the Devonline service. There's been, a, conversely, there's actually been a drop in paper. We acknowledge that. We've got early data from the system that, that, that alludes to that. Now, um, the, the sensitivities of the system are twofold. You've got the sensitivities on the vehicle, so certain compartments with this particular collection system bulk out sooner. Then you've also got the capacity issues at um, uh, the transfer station in terms of the the 2018 design configuration versus the, the increased volumes, which are largely as a result of um, COVID, as I'm sure you, you may appreciate. And in terms of the, the percentage uplift in terms of tonnage and volumes, the early indications are for some of the materials uh, are not cardboard actually being the highest. You know, you're talking upwards of 50, 60 percent increases over original volume. So it, it's not just one material, it's multi materials, and this is a this particular collection system is particularly sensitive to that. Um, and why we're here, that, that increased volume, that increased number of vehicles and that restricted capacity and the increased bulk loads out at the transfer station at Ivy Bridge has created that bottleneck, which is why we're recommending what we're recommending um, in, as part of the action plan. The, the problems here can be no different to across the country and your 60 other contracts uh, when you're collecting materials. On that, um, what I would say is that that we have on other contracts experienced pressure in, in the collection services as a result of volumes. Um, not all of the collection systems that we operate elsewhere are, are the same as the Devon Line service, so some of those are more able to absorb, but certainly we've had to put additional rounds on and additional overtime for, for increasing volumes elsewhere. Thank you. If you finish, Coach Robert. Coach Hodgson, sorry it's taking the time, but I have had a long list. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I've got five questions. Um, I've, none, I've, a lot of the things that I was going to ask have been answered, so that's been helpful. Um, yeah, last week, this, in this room last week, I asked that in, if by this kind of, this today, we could have an assurance that anybody that hadn't had their waste collected for over four weeks would have had that waste collected. Can, what percentage of that waste has been collected? Do we have that figure? I think that was a very specific question, and I think it's un not unreasonable to have an answer because any waste sitting on a doorstep for more than four weeks is unsavoury, but some of the waste that was being reported to me was at that stage 10 weeks waiting food waste. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Mr Bates has also had a letter on, on one of those, for one of those particular groups of people. Um, we've heard a lot about um, hope and try, but we haven't had an awful lot of will and, and absolutely will happen. And I'd just like to know how much of the plan that you're offering now is based on things that you absolutely know you can deliver compared to hope you can deliver based on a lot of variables such as being able to recruit staff, whether the vehicles that you're talking about now um, commissioning new vehicles, because the last lot of vehicles, I think if I remember rightly, because they got delayed because of COVID, which is still upon us and could still flare up again, are we going to find that suddenly we have another nine months wait for vehicles and that gets the blame for this wholly inadequate service? Um, I'd like to understand what kind of creative thinking has been applied to strategic thinking for what's gone wrong. Because I think, personally, I just think it's not rocket science, but equally, I don't think it's that difficult to actually have a rethink. And I think there's a lot of ways that as members we could have possibly helped. For example, where you know some of the people I know live down cul-de-sacs, they'd actually be quite happy to just have something at the end of the lane and all go take it all up there together. There's things like that that could have made a big difference to some of the rounds. Um, my next question is, um, yeah, I just actually, while I was sitting there, tried to go onto the Report It website page that we have, and it's not, you can't get through. So I don't think that's um, um, it, it very very good, good uh, advertisement for what's going on at the moment because people still, do, even if they've had missed more than two days, which if you're 10 weeks down, you're still, you're well beyond the two days, people still need to be able to report it in and I think that's a really essential part of that because that would take a lot of pressure off of a lot of officers and members if people can just say, 
I'm still waiting for my waste to be collected and this is the number of weeks that we've missed it. It'll take a lot of the anger out of the system and I did actually raise this last week. And um, the, the last point is, um, will Camp South Ham District Council be compensated for all the extra officer time and all the, wait, all the problems that have been caused for this failure of the service? Thank you. I'll have the answer. I do need the toilet in a minute. I don't know whether that's permissible. Well, I've got, I've got two other people who want to ask a question, and I was going to do that. Councillor Baldry wants to put a uh, recommendation after this discussion, uh, but okay. I'm not going to let him do that until we've had a break, because there's other members in here who are also looking for a break, OK? Uh, apologies, that was selfish, but uh, I will let it go at some point. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, um, uh, Councillor Hodgson, yeah, uh, um, noted. So, uh, from overview and scrutiny, I think the, the backlog um, point was, was rightly discussed and, and, and clearly, I mean, it is a priority for us and it, it's something that, that we want to address. I think Brian alluded to, to the, the plan working and, and those properties are um, being tackled, but not necessarily all of them. And I think we were targeted with getting those down and cleared by the end of this month. Um, I don't know, Brian may be able to add in terms of the performance of the backlog there. Um, in terms of, um, I think I've noted here, um, how do we know we can deliver? We, we know and it is, it's not ifs, muts, and maybe it's can we deliver? Yes, we can. Um, we can deliver what we're proposing. We, we know this is deliverable on the back of where we were, rolling back a couple of months um, in terms of the service, um, bolstered by additional resource, and the fact that the, the additional resource we've got in currently, we will be seeking to retain. Um, there's, 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 there's resilience in what we're saying. Um, it's not necessarily um, efficient from, from our perspective but it's there to ensure that residents do get their um, recycling collection on their scheduled collection day. Um, in terms of uh, the creative thinking point, look, we, we as we've described, have initially, um, with the support of, of your, your officers as well, we've deployed additional resource from across um, other parts of FCC's business as well as uh, recruiting additional people in and other functions and departments within FCC as well. On the back of that, what was visible to us was the, the, the congestion and the, the volume visibility and the loads out at the transfer station, which obviously enabled us to, to look at the early data to, to, to come up with the, the, the justification of why we are where we are. So we understand that, we know what we need to do um, in order to alleviate that pressure, that bottleneck, that, that pressure on the system that has created the, the, the level of incompletes that that we've got that were improving this week, but what it has identified in the past couple of days is how on the limit of the resource we are. Um, if, if, a, if a crew goes down, um, we, we don't have that resilience to rectify at this point in time. This proposal does alleviate that. So um, we, we know we can deliver this and, and the, the creative thinking bit, we, 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 we know where the problem lies um, with regards to um, I'll, I'll, the report it the web page I'll, 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 um, I'm not sure what the situation is there I'm not sure if it's working. Oh, it's working okay um, and with regards to the uh, officer time compensation I think uh, mr. Mullen you alluded to something that the discussions with regards to that and any any anything that's um, agreed or committed is, is something that I'm sure will be picked up with ourselves and officers going forward Thank you. Um, Councillor Holways, do you still have, want something to say? A question? Thank you, Chairman. Two quick questions. Um, it beggars belief that we are still talking about people who haven't had a collection for eight weeks. I just can't believe it. And trying to explain to people is getting more and more difficult. Can we please have an absolute guarantee that by the end of next week, everyone will have had at least one collection of every commodity? Please. And the second question is that I, I've had the fond belief that by escalating, I've been getting a message through to you to chase up these same collections. And can I please have a guarantee that by the end of next week, you will have sufficient admin staff to deal with it and pass a message on to your crews? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holway. Yeah, I mean, again, to reiterate, we agree. Eight, eight weeks is not acceptable. Um, again, I'll apologise to the residents that, that are in that situation. 
Um, in terms of what we're proposing, the intention is to, to clear that down. Um, the reason we've got supplemental resourcing for two weeks is just in, in case we don't. In terms of the backlog, some of those properties will be on that. So we, we, we are confident that we'll clear the majority of that, um, if not by the end of next week, certainly the next two weeks, and then get back to a stable position um, of the performance going after that. Um, and in terms of the, the additional admin support um, and, and supervisory support, we, we are bolstering and once subject to obviously uh, the plan being approved, if, if that's um, your will and want, um, the magnitude and the, 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 the sheer uh, scale of the issues should suppress to enable us to be able to deal with the, um, the, the any issues that remain um, and that, that administrative support um, is in place and, and we're looking to, to bolster that. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Will. I asked you to speak earlier and you said no. So I speak. didn't want that to then, Chairman, but then I asked, put my name down, which was about 10 people ago. Well, I'm but sorry. But it doesn't you... matter because I am patient. It, it, sometimes. Um, <laughs> I, I will let you go last. Would you like to do that after Council Will? No. Right. Thank you, Chairman. Um, FCC, you are answering questions in a clever mannerism. You aren't answering anything. I don't know what residents feel or, or other members feel, but I am losing the will to live with excuses, blame on others, and no real meaty answers. Apologies with no meaning or outcome. You aren't helping us as members, as you will not confirm anything. Your, town, your tone, tone, tone sounds downbeat. Can we please, for the sake of our residents, move on? As talking and talking and then talking again doesn't help with residents getting their waste collected. And can I suggest, Chairman, we move on to the next part of whatever the next part may be? I did say, just now, that's exactly what I'm going to do, but there are people in this room who would like a break, and I will then, Brilliant. when we come back, call upon Councillor Baldry to do the very next move. OK? Right. So we'll have, how long do you want, 10 minutes? Oh, I'm good. Well, I'm going to talk for half an hour. Hang on. <laughs> now, um, there's one question I'd like to ask FCC is, which has definitely not been asked today before, and I don't know, but other members may know. What does FCC stand for, please? And then I would like to back up what Councillor Hotwood has said and that we move on because we've been asking questions for two hours. We are then going to move into to a debate at some point in time. We've not had a debate yet before we have then a recommendation from Councillor Baldry and then we're going to move into part two. So I think members, we might need to camp out for the night. Thank you. Right, you answered the question about FCC and I'll straighten up on the rest of it. That, that's really difficult because it's Spanish and my Spanish is not very good, but it's, um, I, I, will, I will double check the pronunciation and come back and confirm, but it's, um, it's our, our parent company is uh, uh, Madrid based, Federal de something construction is the, I forget the middle C, but my Spanish is hopeless, um, but and I, <laughs> we have a number of Spanish directors that will tell me off. There you go. So, no, no, that's Federal Communi Com Communications Commission is not ours. That's that's a different organisation, I think. Um, I, I, perhaps I'd like to work for them right now, but uh, uh, but but I will come back um, with the correct Spanish pronunciation um, shortly. Um, Councillor, I think you were being a bit cheeky considering when you were sat in this place some of the things you used to say. I did try and shorten things up earlier on, um, but people wanted to ask your questions, and that's fine if you're prepared to do that. But we will now have a 10, say, be sat down by 25 past to start at half past. And bear in mind, we're still under COVID rules. So when we 